we have a, a union with Christ, a, a spiritual union. This is not a, a carnal union. The Song of Solomon is not a Christian Kama Sutra. Okay, it's a, this is a spiritual seed. It's not a, a, a it's not a fleshly seed that perishes, but it's a supernatural seed that is entered into you. It's the it's the Word of God. You are united with the Word of God. You are one with the Word. And tonight we're just gonna we're just gonna go through the song. We're not gonna read every single verse, but we're gonna bounce around and we're just gonna trance out. And I just the, the Song of Solomon is, is really probably one of the drunkest books in the whole Bible. It's not the drunkest book. And there's so much glory on it. It's a dangerous book. It's the book that's quoted the most by the martyrs of the church. It's a book that can get you killed. If you look at the martyrs that quoted uh, verses on their deathbed, mostly it was Song of Solomon, the love wine. This wine of intimacy, this marital wine. And we're going to drink deep of this marital wine tonight. And so I don't want you just to approach this analytically or just with a notepad and paper, but I want you to just drink it in. I just want to speak impartation into you tonight. There's an impartation on the song. And there's this, this experiential. you got to understand this is experiential love. You see, I can't just point to my marriage contract and say, yes, technically I'm one with my wife because we have a marriage contract. You see, every day there's experiential, tangible love. You see, even the message that Ben and I preach is revelation that the old nature is dead and the old self doesn't exist anymore and that we're one with Christ. If we just keep that in esoteric theory, theology land, then we've missed the point altogether, guys. The point is that we get to drink of it every day. It's a revelation that we drink. This union is something that we drink of every day. David said, my heart and even my flesh cry out for the living God. But the tangible, manifest presence of God, He wants you to be at rest in perfect peace. He wants you to be enthralled with perfect joy. He wants you to be enraptured with perfect love. Okay? So we're going to drink of the song tonight. So just, uh, as I said, just get comfortable. Just drink it in. It's a song of songs just as Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I believe that this is potentially the most anointed song ever written in existence. There's so much prophetic paradigm in it. It's the only book of the Bible that's completely allegorical. It's completely just a, a parabolic of spiritual principles. It's a very unique book. It's amazing. This book even made it into the Bible. Ancient Jewish men were not even allowed to read it until they were thir- over 30 years old. It's just like the whole thing, the Jews consider this the holiest book of the Bible. The early church, they called this the, the early church's Bible. Before they had the Pauline epistles all, all written out, they, they looked at the Psalm of Solomon because they realized that the bridegroom had come. And they realized that they identified themselves as the Shulamite. You are his bride. And it starts out, it says, Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. For your love is more delightful than wine. You have to understand what you're drinking. You're not just drinking a little hocus pocus side dish for a better Pentecostal meeting. When you're drinking, you got to know what this wine is. This wine is the wine of his love. 